This is a video in clinical medicine from the New England Journal of Medicine. Collecting specimens from the surface of the respiratory mucosa with nasopharyngeal swabs is a procedure used to diagnose COVID-19 in adults and children. The procedure is also commonly performed to evaluate patients suspected of having other respiratory viral infections or certain bacterial infections. This video describes collection for detection of COVID-19. There are no specific contraindications for collecting specimens with nasopharyngeal swabs. However, clinicians should be cautious if the patient has had recent nasal trauma or surgery, has a history of a markedly deviated nasal septum, chronically blocked nasal passages, or severe coagulopathy. Nasopharyngeal swabs are specifically manufactured to have long, flexible shafts made of plastic or metal and tips made of Dacron, Rayon, or flocked nylon. It is essential to put on personal protective equipment, or PPE, correctly, and to follow the pertinent respiratory and contact precautions according to both the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, and by your institution. If possible, you should put on and take off PPE in the presence of an observer to make sure that there are no breaks in technique that may pose a risk of contamination. First, put on a protective gown and wash your hands with soap and water, or use an alcohol-based solution, and put on a pair of non-sterile gloves, followed by a protective mask with a rating of N95 or higher, as recommended by the CDC. Finally, put on a face shield for eye protection. All sample tubes should be labeled and the appropriate requisition forms filled out before starting the procedure. Masks are recommended for all patients suspected of having COVID-19. Have the patient take off her mask and blow her nose into a tissue to clear excess secretions from the nasal passages. Remove the swab from the packaging. Tilt the patient's head back slightly so that the nasal passages become more accessible. Ask the patient to close her eyes to lessen the mild discomfort of the procedure. Gently insert the swab along the nasal septum, just above the floor of the nasal passage, to the nasal pharynx, until resistance is felt. If you find resistance to the passage of the swab, back off and try reinserting it at a different angle, closer to the floor of the nasal canal. Insert the swab into the nostril, parallel to the palate. The swab should reach a depth equal to the distance from the nostrils to the outer opening of the ear, the CDC recommends leaving the swab in place for several seconds to absorb secretions and then slowly removing the swab while rotating it. Your institution may also recommend rotating the swab in place several times before removing it. Ask the patient to reapply her mask. Open the collection tube and insert the swab into the tube. Break the swab at the groove. Discard what remains of the swab. Wipe the sample tube with a surface disinfectant wipe and insert the tube into an open bag held by an assistant. The sample may also be returned to its original packaging for transport, depending on institutional practices. Follow the CDC directions for direct processing of the swab specimen or placement of the swab in media with or without refrigeration. Remove your personal protective equipment, as shown here, or in accordance with the standards at your institution. First, remove your gown and gloves. Then clean your hands with an alcohol-based solution or soap and water. Put on a new pair of gloves and then remove your face shield and dispose of it, or clean and store it, in accordance with the guidelines at your institution. Remove your gloves. Rewash your hands and put on another pair of gloves. Then, remove your mask and follow your institutional guidelines for disposal or reuse. Finally, remove the last pair of gloves and wash your hands. This video has demonstrated how to collect specimens from the surface of the respiratory mucosa with nasopharyngeal swabs in order to diagnose COVID-19 in adults and in children. As shown, it is important to use approved PPE and the appropriate technique to minimize the possibility of spreading the virus.